to today's Play Attention webinar. My name is Amber and I will be your host. Uh, today we are continuing our executive function webinar series and we will be talking about mental flexibility and why it's difficult to change. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get started today. We are recording this webinar, so if you have to jump off early or you would like to share it with someone later, you will receive the recording via email after, shortly after the webinar is over today. Um, also, you will receive my slides as well, so we'll, we will include these slides in that email follow-up. Um, I try to make things interactive. Um, it's a little bit hard on a webinar, but um, you will see down below in your toolbar that you have the option to raise your hand. Um, I may occasionally ask you if something makes sense or you've experienced that before and you can use that icon to raise your hand. Um, however, the chat box is the best way if you have a question um, to ask, you can go ahead and just type that in the chat box. I will try to get to those questions as we go through today. Um, if not, I will spend some time afterwards today touching on questions and answering those. We do have a lot to get through today, so I will be getting started here just momentarily, just making sure everybody um, that's going to hop on is able to hop on. If at any time you lose connection to the webinar, just go ahead and go back to that original link that you used to get clocked or to get logged in, and that will get you logged in. Again, my name is Amber. I will be your host today. I have spent um, nearly 20 years now in education, in secondary and post-secondary education, helping students uh, achieve their goals and working through hurdles that they may have or may be experiencing. Um, I have used Play Attention and it's been a very effective tool um, for my family as well for the students that I have worked with. But today, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about mental flexibility. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is mental flexibility? What does that term mean to you? And this is an opportunity for you to be engaged and interact with us today. Um, if you wanna type what that word mental flexibility means to you, I will share some of those things as they come through. We are gonna talk a little bit more about the definition behind it and what that looks like, but if you have any thoughts on what mental flexibility means to you, go ahead and type them in the chat box and I will start to share those. Um, being able to switch from task to task. Shelly, that is a great one. And also being okay with change. The ability to logically overcome and learn. And I think that is a great thing to not be afraid necessarily of the change or the failure that could come, but being able to learn from it. So very good. Shift attention. Ability to change subject and or thoughts. Um, the ability to change without prolonged discomfort. That's a great one too. These are all very, very good. But yes, being able to quickly pivot. Um, you know, you've heard that word a lot when we were in 2020 to be able to pivot because change came so often to us quickly moving to the next thing. Um, the ability to think more than one way to complete a task. Yes, resilience. That is a great word. Open-minded. Um, ability to change with little anxiety. And that is a great point too, because oftentimes that's why we struggle with that mental flexibility because we have the anxiety and oftentimes the anxiety of the unknown. Open up to new areas of learning without significant resistance. These are all great. I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them, but thank you so much for those of you that shared with me those thoughts. Those are all very, very good. Well, one last one I just saw pop up, go with the flow. And that is a great one too. There are so many terms and keywords and things that we can think about when we talk about mental flexibility. So today we are going to talk about what is mental flexibility. We're gonna talk about mental flexibility and how it relates to executive function. And we are going to talk about ways to improve your ability to shift gears and new ways to solve problems. And so we will, you will have some takeaways today. We have a few activities that are in the PowerPoint slides today. And again, remember, I will be sharing these slides with you so you can go back and do those activities um, by yourself, with your children, with your students. They're gonna be activities that are both effective, both for uh, children as well as for adults. 
So mental flexibility, I got a lot of great responses just now when I asked you that question, but really mental flexibility, and a lot of these are things that we've hit on already, the ability to adapt to new circumstances. So something's that new, something that is new and being able to adapt to that. And I think that's another important word, and I'm going to bring that up again today in the webinar, but adaptability, the ability to adapt to new things the ability to face something new. So again, sometimes with mental flexibility, there's an anxiety when things are new. And partly that is not necessarily because we don't know how to do them or we've never experienced it, but we don't know. It's the unknown. We don't know what we're going to get. So sometimes it's hard for us to change or have that mental flexibility if, it, if we're going to a new school or we're starting a new job or a new routine. It's so comfortable for us to stay in those past um, routines, those past places, because we're, we know them and they're comfortable the ability to help us grow and get along better with one another. And I think that's another important piece because as humans, we are so different, right? And that's one thing we always talk about here at Play Attention is there's not a one size fits all when it comes to everyone. Some of these tips you're gonna say, oh yeah, this is great for me. And some of them you're gonna say, mm, that's not so much for me. And that is okay because we are not all the same and there's not a one size fits all. But when we have the adaptability and the ability to have that mental flexibility, it helps us grow and it helps us be able to get along with others, whether that's at home, in the workplace, at school, with our neighbors, our community, but we're able to build that bridge. Ability to adjust your thought pattern. So often when we are rigid in our thinking, we think there's only one way to complete a task when there really could be other ways that are maybe more effective, but you'll never know if you never branch out. So being able to look at those other thought patterns, to be able to solve those problems other ways. Ability to alternate your attention and focus from one topic to another. I think I had somebody answer that almost verbatim, but that is the truth. Being able to quickly pivot, as I mentioned, and move to something um, very quickly. And oftentimes it's very hard for us to have mental flexibility, especially if we're doing something that we enjoy, something that's fun, exciting, stimulating. We wanna keep doing it. We don't wanna change over to having to pay the bills, to do our homework, to do that book report, to do that budgeting report for work. We don't wanna do that. We wanna stay on that thing that's fun and exciting, but when we have that mental flexibility, we are able to make that shift not saying we can't come back to that fun and exciting thing, but we are able to move to that more of that required thing as we are shifting because of that mental flexibility. We have the ability to solve problems. And going back to that thought pattern, we're able to solve the problems in different ways or try to see if there's different ways to solve that problem. Because oftentimes there are many. Um, many times when I was working with individuals, um, you know, especially if I was in a leadership position, I would get some individuals to come to me and say, well, we just can't do it this way. This is not okay. I don't like this or this or this. And I'd say, that's fine. Then come to me with a solution. And if I got three or four different solutions, that was a great opportunity for us to really look and see where we could find where it would work best and the most efficient and effective solution to that problem. The ability to move freely from one situation or task to another. So that's kind of like the attention and focus, but now from the situation to the task. And that can also be, you know, we have so much going on in our world. So sometimes it's hard to break away from what's happening on TV, what's happening on social media, what's happening in all of those places, but to be able to shift out of that and onto something new and really be flexible in that. So as I mentioned before, you know, one of the words I really think that it really encompasses mental flexibility is that adaptability, the, the ability to change. And that is the biggest thing. You know, we, we talk, we say mental flexibility, but it's really the ability to adapt to that change, whether it's a person, a place, a thing, a routine, whatever that is, we're making that adjustment. And again, it can be very, very difficult. We've been talking about this topic for years and years and years. There's been lots of books written on it because change is difficult and change is difficult because again it's that unknown but how can we make things better how can we make it easier how can we become a more flexible thinker a more have more mental flexibility so change is a little bit easier for us 
So look at this. Um, I love this activity. And at first glance, you think, oh, okay, green, purple, um, you know, yellow, red. So you're looking at those words and the colors that I'm saying, and I'm actually saying the colors, I'm not saying the words. And so are you able to say, oh, the first one's blue, second one's red, yellow, orange, or are you looking at that color and you're unable to, sh to shift? right? Who has seen this activity before? Have you seen this before? Raise your hand. And do you find that you were able to go through it or did you find it really, really difficult? Um, another area, oh, I'm seeing hands go up. Yep. I'm seeing lots of hands go up that you've seen this before and it's been something that you've experienced. Um, you know, the, the other thing that I've seen that I didn't share on this PowerPoint slide is have you ever seen uh, a text written where vowels are taken out or words or numbers are replaced with letters and they want to know, can you read this, right? Can you read this with pieces miss missing? And sometimes it takes that mental flexibility to say, okay, what am I really taking on here? What am I doing here? And so this is a great activity to use yourself, to use with your family, to use with students. And so again, these will be in the slides that you'll have access to. So why do some people struggle with the ability to, to adapt? Some, re some reasons that are thought can be stuck on certain thoughts or behavior, comfortable, right? Routine safe, right? We're stuck on those because we're in our comfort zone. And I know you've, I'm sure you've heard this, but when real change happens outside of our comfort zone, and so when we're inside our comfort zone, it's a lot harder for us to see those other things that are around us. Some people can be stubborn, right? And this isn't necessarily a negative thing. Sometimes having that strong will is good, but we want to make sure that we can adjust when necessary argumental or oppositional. So you're gonna see here in a minute, we're gonna talk about executive function, specifically how it relates to mental flexibility, but some individuals are diagnosed with ODD, oppositional disorder, and it makes them very obstinate in, in their beliefs and their behaviors, and it makes them very, very rigid. And so how do we overcome that so those individuals can be more flexible in their thinking? anxiety or stress. Again, new brings that anxiety, that stress. And so it's hard for us to make that adjustment because we, the fear of the unknown is overwhelming. However, for some, it's caused because of weak executive function. So we're going to talk about executive function for those who aren't familiar with it. Um, again, this is our executive function series webinar. Um, we have done several different topics in this. And um, if you've missed some of them, if you're brand new and you're like, wow, this is my first topic, you've covered other ones, you can always go to our website and under webinar tabs, there's a link where you can see all of the previous webinars that we've done. Um, but we get into in-depth the very specific specific areas of executive function and really how to help individuals with those and mental flexibility is one of those. And so here is all of the different areas and we've definitely touched on many of these. I think we're in number five um, when it comes to topics, but when we talk about um, the executive function process, executive function, the easiest way to explain it is it's really like the CEO of the brain, right? It helps me plan, prioritize, organize, it helps me avoid procrastination, helps me with emotional regulation, it helps me get on task, stay on task. There are mental functions that are required for us to be effective day in and day out. And it's they're necessary. And so when we talk about executive function, mental flexibility is definitely one of them, and you see that in here, but also impulse control is part of executive function. So thinking before you act emotional control, being able to regulate those emotions so you don't have those really big highs and really big lows. Mental flexibility, adapting our thoughts and our behaviors. Self-monitoring, having that self-awareness to how I am behaving, how I am compared to others. My environment, what does that look like? Am I able, am I able to see that? Initiation, getting a task started working memory, problem solving. And so that goes into that mental flexibility a little bit because our working memory is our ability to problem solve, to critically think, to take information and process it and come up with a solution. So we can be struggling with mental flexibility and working memory with our executive function, or it can be one or the other. Planning, so our ability to set and meet goals and organization, keeping track of things. 
Why do individuals have weak executive function? We are finding more and more that weak executive function is comorbid with other diagnosis. Uh, very, very often it's with what you see down below. It's, it's accompanying that disorder. ADHD, both hyperactive and attentive. Anxiety, depression, ODD, autism. We, we're seeing weak executive function start to happen with our aging population dementia, as well as a traumatic brain injury. So someone can have strong executive function and if they experience a traumatic brain injury, a concussion, an injury, something like that, that can affect those cognitive abilities that they have that make up that strong executive function. And that's why here at Play Attention, we work with a lot of different individuals, individuals that do have diagnoses and, and don't because most of the time we do see that that's comorbid, but sometimes individuals are struggling, just struggling with that weak executive function. And so the thing about executive function is it can be learned. It can be learned at any age. There's no age where we're not able to learn a new skill. We know that with our brains, our brains have neuroplasticity and they're moldable and shapeable. And given any time in our life, we can learn a new skill, but we have to have the right pieces of information. And when we start talking about attention and impulse control and memory, those are a little bit harder for us to wrap our minds around. However, when I talk about skills like tying our shoes or riding a bike or driving a car, those are a lot easier because they're so tangible. But either way, either of those skills that I'm learning, I'm still building a new neural pathway in my brain as I'm learning that skill. Now we can have weak pathways, we can have medium pathways, and we can have strong pathways that work towards permanency. And when we have a skill that we can do at any time, we can recall it, we can do it, such as tying our shoe, uh, sometimes riding a bike, you know, you say you never forget to how to ride a bike, right? Well, we've created that pathway permanently. Well, we can do the same thing with executive function skills. We just have to bring in the right kind of training, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So when we talk about change, that mental flexibility, there's a lot that we have to follow in that path, right? So there are a lot of different areas that we need to look at. First of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that something needs to be changed. We need to adjust whatever it is. We need to shift that thought pattern, transform it, right? And then we need to transition into that new thought pattern and modify. So I'm going to share strategies with you shortly. And they're, again, like I said, they're not going to work for everyone. Or you might want to modify it. And that's okay. When we talk about change, when we talk about mental flexibility, it needs to be thought in as a circle, right? It's not a square. It's not a straight line. It's something that we're continuously working on and making adjustments to. Because just as you notice in the year 2020, there were a lot of things that happened that we were very unprepared or unaware that could happen, correct? I mean, there were things that we never in a million years thought might happen and they did and it caused us to make those changes those pivots and so you know there aren't always solutions exactly right away we need to transition and and really transform into those and so now how what are some ways so we've talked a little bit now about what is mental flexibility it's that adaptability it's that change how is it working with executive function? Well, it's one of the key components that we need for that strong executive function. And again, to have that strong executive function, it allows us to be on time. It allows us to complete our tasks. It allows us to quickly make change. It allows us to be open-minded. It allows us to control those impulses. So a lot of different areas. And so that's how that mental flexibility fits into that executive function. And we know executive function can be strengthened. Again, because our brain, our brain is a very powerful tool that we can always be modifying and strengthening. So what are some ways right now you can do to start building that mental flexibility? Number one, having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, okay? So I'm sure many of you have heard this term before. So growth mindset means you're open. You have the ability to make that shift. You can pivot. 
if you make a mistake, if you do fail, it doesn't stop you and shut you down. It allows you to learn from that and it allows you to grow, hence the name growth mindset. So as it, you see here in the slide, it says, even when things get hard, I won't give up. I can do anything I set my mind to. I can't do it yet, but I will be able to do it soon. When I believe in myself, I feel confident, brave, and strong. I understand that my achievements and my goals take time and effort. I can face my fears and be courageous. I can learn by making mistakes and taking risks. So there's a lot in there, and obviously it's more of a cartoony, and this looks like something that you would put in a classroom. However, these are still very effective for adults because when you start a new job, when you get a new boss, it's very likely that things are going to change and you're going to have to make that adaptability. And it could be very well, it could very well be that you don't know how to do everything in that job. However, you're there to learn and build and grow from that. And so when we have that growth mindset, that mental flexibility, it makes those things easier. Um, let's see, I had a question about the record, uh, the recording. Yes, um, we are recording this and the recording will be available after the webinar is over today. You will receive that email automatically. So when we talk about a growth mindset, the opposite, right, would be our fixed mindset or not having that mental flexibility where you're shut down to new ideas. You don't want to try. You don't want to get outside of that comfort zone. It's very easy for you to get frustrated and, um, you know, just you don't want to move forward with anything because that's not the way that it's always been. It's too hard. I want to give up. If I try, what if I fail? or I'm going to fail anyway, so why even try? This is good enough even though it isn't my best. I'm not as smart as she is, so I will never achieve what she can. I, can, I, just, can't, I just can't do it. I'll never be as good as they are. I don't want to be wrong or make any mistakes. To err is to, human, to be human, right? We know that. It is hard to make a mistake, right? And especially sometimes when individuals are struggling with weak executive function and ADHD, often we know there's a component of perfectionism in there. And so that can make it even more difficult to even try because they're so afraid to get things wrong, we don't even want to try. So having that fixed mindset reinforces that thought. And so by starting to open that mind and be more willing, it allows us to start making that growth. So how do you do that? What are some very simple ways I can do it, my children can do it, my students can do it? We have an activity. Oh, first let's talk a little bit more about the fix and mindset. I got so excited about the activity, I got ahead of myself. So fix mindset, it cheats you out of opportunities in your life. You'll never know if you'll succeed if you never try. It's a way rigid thinkers go about their daily life. So somebody with a fixed mindset is very stuck on their routine. They do not like any kind of change and if things can be, that's where they can experience that emotional dysregulation if things change. It keeps you from moving ahead with ease, joy, and health. We know our mindset is directly connected to the, our health and well-being. And so this can affect our health long-term, can cause stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, depression, anxiety. I said anxiety twice, but it really can affect our health. Um, growth mindset, it allows you to better understand that goals are achieved with effort and time. It allows you to learn from your mistakes instead of uh, dwelling on them or brooding on them sets the stage for mental flexibility to take place. And so I don't know if you've ever experienced this, if you've ever experienced a child or a, an individual, a partner, uh, a coworker, that when something goes wrong, it ruins the whole rest of their day or the whole rest of the activity because they're so set on what that outcome they wanted they weren't able to enjoy the rest of what was happening or learn from that. It just shuts them down. And so again, we want to build that mental flexibility, that ability to move through that, to control that impulse, to have it shut you down, to um, give you that uh, ability to process it and move forward. 
So here's the activity that I was excited to show you. So this is a very simple activity that you can do that leads us towards positive thinking because positive thinking is part of that strong mental flexibility. You saw that in the other areas. So here are some just fun ones that we included. And in the next slide, you're going to have a blank one that you can print off, that you can do, that you can share. But, you know, I can do this, um, you know, be awesome today. Not yet, but I will get there soon. I will try until I get it right. We all have good ideas. And this is not a failure. It's a lesson learned. And I think that's really an important one sometimes for adults is when a mistake happens, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. It can be an opportunity for you to learn if you're learning from it, right? We, we have to make sure we're learning from that failure so we can move forward, so we can grow. So here is um, this, you'll have this in your slides, and this gives you an opportunity to put whatever you need in there to help start to switch your mind. And, you know, it's, it's just like if we're learning a new skill with, again, riding our bike or mental flexibility or attention, when we reinforce positive things, it's easier for us to have that. We're building that ability in our brain to have that first reaction be positive, right? Because we're reinforcing it, we're doing it every day. You can, you know, write on these, cut them out, put them on your wall at your desk, your kids can put them in their room, whatever the case may be, and put them on your mirror uh, in your bathroom. But by looking at them every day, you're reinforcing that positive thought as you move forward. So just a fun little um, activity to for, for effective for both children and adults change. So this first one we talked about then was growth versus fixed mindset. So building a growth mindset, now it's changing it up. And that can be really, really scary thinking, oh my goodness, making the change right away. What if I'm not ready? What if I don't want to do that? Well, there's easy ways to get started on that. Make small changes to your routine first. Take one thing that you know you can handle as change and change it. And maybe you change just one thing and you do it for a week and then you change another thing, but you don't always have to do. And that's sometimes, especially as adults, that we struggle with is we do too much too fast. And when we do too much too fast, we cannot maintain that level that we've put out, that level of effort, that, that new habit. It's more than we can do. So when we make small changes as we move forward, we're more effective to keep those changes long term. By doing this, this gives you the ability to practice mental flexibility on your own terms. There's oftentimes going to be when you have to practice mental flexibility, not on your terms. And that is even more difficult because, again, you're doing something that you, that's unknown that can be really cause anxiety. So by doing things on our own, small little changes to our routine, to what happens in our homes, to how we you know, go to work, whatever the case may be, this gives us the ability to have more control over that outcome, yet we're making that, that change and we're starting to build that flexibility. Do something normally you would do, but in a different way. So this can be go a different way to work. This can be, um, you know, do your, your to-do list at work backwards. This can be, you know, there's going to be activity we're going to talk about here. This could be make something new at home. Um, there's lots of different things to do, but find something that you normally do that you always do it a certain way and then do it a different way. Figure out a different way to do that. That not only helps you with that ability to change, it's helping you problem solve. So we're hitting that mental flexibility as well as that working memory because we're working on problem solving and critical thinking. Meet someone new or engage with some, someone new. It's a little bit harder to do that right now. A lot of us are still working from home. And so we've had new people come in and out of our office maybe, and we haven't had that opportunity to engage with them. But try meeting someone new, engaging in something new, or engaging in a new topic that is new to you that you've just learned about and starting to build that ability. In the classroom or at home, you could ask children um, to follow different directions. So if there's an activity you always do at home or a game that you always play, have them do different directions. And there's going to be activity we're going to talk about that. 
or have them make all brand new uh, instructions. Sometimes that's even hard for adults. If you've always played Monopoly a certain way, or you've always played, you know, um, checkers a certain way, and all of a sudden they say, what if we do it this way? That is a great way, not only, again, for them to be building that ability to have that mental flexibility, but to have that working memory as well. Introduce a fun surprise during the day. Um, I know there are some families um, and some adults that are doing school and, and work at home. Um, some are doing a hybrid, some are in the office. There's a lot of variables right now, but try something new. Try to introduce something new. And it can be as easy as we're going to go outside today and we're going to have a scavenger hunt right in the middle of the day, right? Or, and it doesn't have to be during the week. It can be a Saturday. It doesn't have to be something where I'm going out and I'm spending money. There can be a lot of activities that we introduce to help individuals with uh, something out of their routine that again helps them. And if we're doing a scavenger hunt, again, we're planning or we're doing that mental flexibility, something new, but we're also incorporating that working memory because they're solving um, a problem or they're, they're finding a solution as they go through that scavenger hunt. So here's a really great activity. I kind of alluded to this earlier to do with kiddos. Um, have them find their favorite game and build new rules. Then they need to teach the rules to their family and friends. And so this is a great way to start building that ability for them to start thinking outside of the box. And I think that's another way for us to talk about mental flexibility is thinking outside of the box. So again, you're gonna have access to this little um, page here. So you can have your kiddos do one of, the, one of these or you can have them make up a new game. Maybe they wanna make up a brand new game to play at home. And so they have to create the instructions and then they have to teach the rest of the family family how to do that. So a great activity with kids, with students. Um, for adults, change your routine, right? So cook a new recipe. Find something that you've never done before that is a little scary and think, holy smokes, um, I am going to try for the first time to make my own pasta from home um, or from scratch. I have a new mixer and I have a pasta attachment and I'm going to try that. And if, it, if I don't do it right the first time, it's a good opportunity to learn and continue to grow, right? And so find something new that you've never done before and try that out. And again, if you fail, it's okay. It's a, le a great learning opportunity. Go a different way to work. And then when you go a different way to work, it, think about what that, how that felt. Did you have anxiety? Were you afraid you're gonna run into traffic? What did that think? I think that's another piece and that's part of it is what barriers might come in the way of you not doing this new thing. And then choose a book or a topic that's new to you and learn some more information on it. And so think of these things and there are probably a million other ones that we could offer as, as suggestions but the important thing is write down barriers that you might meet when you come to this new challenge, this change, and how will you overcome them? And I think that's an important piece when we're talking about change. Um, it's the unknown that we don't know, but if we can try to think of barriers that we might encounter and then come up with solutions, again, mental flexibility, working memory, and so really doing those together. Mindfulness. So mindfulness is very helpful. Um, we know this. We've done lots of webinars on mindfulness. We have a great ebook um, on mindfulness as well on our website. Um, but mindfulness is to be in that present moment, to quiet that anxiety, to quiet those racing thoughts, to let go of something that might be dwelling, to quiet that internal critic that dialogue. And so by practicing mindfulness, that can be very, very helpful. Now, what we've talked about in the past with mindfulness is sometimes mindfulness is very, very difficult for individuals, especially if they're struggling with attention, because it's almost like a million TV sets on in your mind at one time. How do you know when you're being mindful? How would you even do that for 20 or 30 minutes? And I always say, you don't have to start like that. Start for a minute, right? Just start for a minute, just start and start again. Remember, we don't have to start big, we can start small, but then we're building on that as we go. And I think that's a really important part. Um, so when we talk about mindfulness, practice allows the following to take place. It strengthens our ability to self-observe. So one of the areas of executive function that we talked about earlier was self-awareness. So mindfulness gives us that. It kind of gives us that ability to stop and realize what's happening right now. It helps us train our attention. So not only is it quieting anxiety and we're getting health benefits from it, it's also helping us build our ability to sustain our attention. 
And that's why sometimes we do have to start smaller as opposed to just starting with 20 minutes. We start with a minute, maybe two minutes, three minutes, and we build as we go. We're able to develop different relationships and experiences with stressful activities, events, situations. It really does help us build that ability to quiet and calm. And it makes you more, uh, it makes more of an emotional state which you can help control impulsivity. So you have more control over your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, and that gives us the ability to kind of quiet that impulse. Um, because that's what's happening a lot of times when our attention's all over the place, we're having a hard time controlling that impulse. And when we can't control that, we can't control that mind and that quiet and that calm. And so bringing mindfulness in is very, very very helpful and a great tool um, in helping you build that mental flexibility. Limiting uh, interruptions. So this is very, I think, very critical right now for a lot of us. We're experiencing a lot more of this than we've ever experienced before, and that's because many of us are home together. Um, we uh, play attention here. We're based out of Western North Carolina, for those that you did, that didn't know. And for my family, I have two high schoolers. Um, some of you that have been on other webinars um, knew, probably know that, but um, for those of you that don't, I have two high schoolers, and when we went to virtual school in March, we have not gone back to regular school yet. We've been all virtual and essentially I'm home every day as well um, working. So we're all in this household together. And that can be very hard because there are a lot more uh, interruptions than you would normally maybe have in the office. And so by limiting those interruptions helps you stay focused and helps you move forward. So interruptions, uh, whether they're from the environment or people, can disrupt our ability to be mentally uh, flexible. It's true that um, you're not able, it's due to the fact you're not able to stay focused. When you're getting that constant distraction, you can't stay focused, you can't stay in that task, you're having a hard time, and then maybe it's easier to go back to your previous thing, or you, you just don't even have time, you're already stressed out by that, you don't want to do something new. And we know when we um, are not, we are, we're not remaining focused, we do not complete our tasks and we do not follow through. So that indicates part of that time management struggle that we can have uh, with our executive function. And we also know, which sometimes happens when we're being interrupted, we're trying to multitask. And we talk about this a lot at Play Attention that once ago, um, we believe that multitasking was a sign of productivity, but we know now that it's not. Because basically when you think of multitasking, if I'm doing one task, I'm giving that task 100% of my attention, my time, my ability. If I have two tasks, now each of those tasks has some of that 100%. I only have 100% of attention, ability, time to put forward. So now I'm splitting that between two different things and I may not do as good of a job on one or the other. So I need to be able to structure it so that I am not multitasking and I'm limiting those distractions so I can stay focused in on what I do. So how do we fix that? How does that get better? One activity that we've used here at our house, I think it's very effective, not only for adults, but for students, especially if your student is a high schooler or um, they need a little bit more quiet time because maybe they're doing a Zoom call or whatever the case may be. We have um, this activity here preventing interruptions. So number one, we're clear in our household what the plan is of the day, right? These are my work hours. These are their school hours. We know what the plan is. We know when there's breaks. We know all of those different pieces. We've created a red light, green light, um, uh, act, or red light, green light to put on our doors, okay? So red light means I'm in a webinar right now. I cannot be interrupted. You'll have to wait until I'm done. I'm very sorry, right? Green light means, okay, I'm maybe not on the phone or whatever I'm doing. You can go ahead and come in. Sometimes the door will be open then, but a green light will indicate, hey, you can go ahead and come in. Uh, red light obviously means no, do not under any circumstances unless the house is burning down and then get yourself out of the house first. <laughs> but, and you can even do a yellow light if you want. If you wanna be like, well, maybe knock or you know, send me a text or whatever the case may be, um, that's a great way too. And you don't have to have a door to put it on. You can have somebody put it, maybe if your child or you or yourself, you use headphones with work, right? Um, to help kind of with some of those distractions and those interruptions, put a little, um, you know, just a red light, green light on your desk, a piece of paper, um, or you can make a little table tent or whatever the case may be. And that helps 
give that visual to that individual that right now I am in a time that I cannot. Um, be clear of expectations. So, you know, we talked about this. We did a webinar back in March last year when a lot of individuals did go to virtual learning. And what are those expectations that you're requiring of yourself, of your student, of your child, whatever the case may be? So what are those expectations? I expect X, Y, and Z to happen. I expect to only be interrupted if A, B, and C happen, whatever the case may be. And then a great, uh, another great thing to do is turn off unnecessary technology. So I think that's really effective um, for my teenagers as well as for myself. There's certain times of the day that I don't need technology. I don't need it around me besides maybe my computer. And in, even in my computer, if I'm working on something that's very critical or that I need to get done, I will turn off my email. I'll shut my email down so no notifications are coming up. I'll turn my phone off so no notifications are coming up. And so that gives me that ability to stay in and do what I need to do. And that gives me the opportunity to start looking outside of the box and being flexible because I'm giving my undivided attention to that topic. Um, I think another uh, important tool, and we've talked about this when we've talked about a lot of our areas of executive function, is how social media and media in general can pull us out, right? And really be that interruption. So being able to limit that and, and move on to something else. And then finally, a great tool, especially if you have younger um, kiddos, is to find activities distractions. So let's say you're all together, but you know, one once a week or twice a week, you have a meeting that you have to be engaged in. Find activities that are fun for them that they can be engaged in while you're doing that. And a really great way to do that is ask them. Ask them, what kind of activities would you love to do? What would be very interesting for you so that they're engaged in that process as well? Um, okay, so another area, um, and we talk about this all the time at Play Attention, so I think this is a really important um, area still to cover, even though we, we cover it every single time, is our diet. Our diet makes a big difference in how focused, how that mental clarity is, how that ability is to regulate our emotions. And so it's true, it affects so many areas of our, of our life, of our body. We talk about impulse, we talk about um, time management. Management, we talk about, you know, a lot of different areas, uh, you know, emotional regulation and a lot of those pieces have components that relate back to our diet because what we take in really affects our whole person. And so I put the link down below and again, you'll have this availability to when you receive the slides, but uh, verywell.com talked about people who tend to be really rigid with their thinking or behavior often have a deficiency in serotonin. We know, and, and of course, exercise is going to be our next thing. So we know we can get it from exercise, but we can also get it from food. And so diets such as a higher ratio of complex carbohydrates um, or protein-rich foods that have, um, uh, um, have different uh, nutrients in them can really be effective in building blocks of serotonin. Tryptophan is a great one, and it builds that ability. So there are some examples of foods here. So that may be something that you start to talk about change with with your family. Maybe that's the one you take on and say, okay, one night a week, we're going to have a new uh, you know, meal, and we're going to have it with this type of food, and to really start incorporating those things into your everyday life. And so then, of course, that leads me to exercise, because, again, that's a very important piece when we're talking about it. Again, serotonin, being able to be more flexible and more open minded and more positive. And so we know exercise also increases those areas and increases our energy. Um, it can also often get you out of a repetitive thinking. If you're dwelling on something and you can't let it go and you can't move on, a lot of times just getting up and taking a walk can can change your thought process can give you a new insight on something and of course decreases our stress and anxiety and um, it can quiet those racing thoughts so always movement is always important and it doesn't have to be oh I'm running a marathon or I'm running a 5k or a 10k or even running at all again it could be a quick walk at lunch it can be just you know sometimes for me because I am in my home and I am working from home very very often just walking out and getting the mail just getting outside getting some sun getting a break and what I'm looking at can help make those adjustments and all very important in that mental flexibility.
And then the last area I want to touch on, because play attention is an integral part in helping individuals build executive function, is the play attention system. And so when we talk about play attention, we create a customized training program that uses neurotechnology and integrates cognitive skill training to help individuals build executive function. Now, um, you know, some individuals um, are very, very, uh, so there's some areas that we've talked about that they will say, oh yeah, I, I really need to work on that. And there's other areas that say, no, that's my superpower. That's what I want to stay on. And that's okay. Again, there's not a one size fits all. And so that's what play attention does is take those areas that you want to improve and leverages those areas that are already your superpower. And so when I say that, we talk about um, impulsivity. So impulsivity sometimes is featured as a bad thing, but it's not always bad. You know, impulsivity gives us that ability to be a little bit riskier, to go forward uh, on something that maybe we wouldn't. And not that we want to just jump off the cliff, we want to be, you know, we want to be calculated in that risk, but being able to do that, there's a lot of inventors and CEOs that are ADHD and have impulsivity, but we have to be able to leverage that. And so that's what play attention wants to do is take those areas that you need a little bit more strengthening in, right? And leverage those with areas that are already strong and you already view as your superpower. And so we have all different types of skill development and all different cognitive areas of executive function that you can build. And we do have a focus assessment. Our focus assessment is a norm-based test of attentional control. It compares individuals to their peers, and it gives us kind of a baseline of how your attention is performing around executive function. So it's a quick 20-minute assessment you can do right from home, right from your office. And it does, though, give us a really good breakdown of the different areas of executive function that you might be struggling with that need a little bit strengthening. And so we offer that to really help us customize that plan to work best for individuals. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the next step slide that I have here um, as we're starting to wrap up. But play attention looks like this. We have a, our neurotechnology, our body wave armband. We have different cognitive skills um, based in different areas to help individuals strengthen executive function. And we also have a behavioral shaping tool that really helps individuals build self-regulation because they're all interconnected. Now, I'm not going to go into depth uh, with play attention today. Some of you already use play attention. Some of you already know about play attention. But next week, uh, January 14th, we will be hosting a webinar on play attention. For pretty much the hour of our webinar time, we will be covering play attention and we'll be touching on the different pieces, how it works, um, the science behind it, the technology behind it, all of those different pieces, the different cognitive skills. And so all of that will be covered. So if you're interested in that, they, um, we, I will have an opportunity for you to type that in the chat box and you will be able to um, attend that webinar next week. But it will be next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, like all of our webinars. Again, like everything else, it will be recorded. So we talked about really being able to strengthen your mental flexibility, some areas that you can start working on now, um, practicing that growth mindset with increased positivity, changing up things, uh, mindfulness, limiting your interruptions, your diet, your exercise, and play attention. And again, you'll have access to all of these slides, so you'll be able to go back and look at them and do those activities yourself, with your child, uh, with students, whatever the case may be. So next steps, what does that look like? What does next steps look like for you? Again, there's not a one size fits all. Everybody's a little bit different. Um, if you've been looking at play attention for a while and it's something that you're interested in and you'd like to talk more um, about that with one of our, con uh, one of our uh, associates, um, you can type in consult um, and your number and we will reach out to you and we will schedule a time to do that consultation. We'll talk specifically about how play attention would be effective for your situation and we'll go through all of the different pieces for you. So if you're interested in a consultation, go ahead and type in consult um, with your information. If you're interested in learning more about Play Attention through our webinar, um, we can register you for that. If you just type in webinar, um, we will make sure that you're registered for that webinar. Again, it's next Thursday. It already will be January 14th next week, um, 1 p.m. Eastern time, like all of our webinars, we will record it. They're always free. And so if you're interested in that webinar, go ahead and type that. 
If you're interested in learning more about your attention, your executive function, um, you're able to take that focus assessment. Now, normally our focus assessments are $50 a piece, um, but if you're interested in doing that, you can type in focus and you can receive that um, assessment at half price for $25. So for that $25, what you get is we will reach out to you, we'll gather some information from you, obviously your payment, um, your name, your birth date, those are things we need for that assessment. And then we will send you a link. It will give you instructions on how to complete that assessment. You'll do that 20 minute assessment. And then once you're complete with that, you will reach back out to us, let us know that you're done. And we will spend time with you, not only going over that assessment with you, talking about the different areas, but we'll also talk a little bit more about play attention. So you'll get that um, with that. So if you're interested in that, you can type in focus and we can help you with that as well. Um, really focus any ages can do that focus assessment and so um, you know if you're interested for yourself or your child whatever the case may be you can type in that focus so I'm seeing a lot of information a lot of um, responses here I'm going to see if I um, have any questions here before we wrap up um, everyone will receive the recording um, that will come automatically to you via email. So just watch for that email from us. It takes about an hour or so after the webinar is over, but you will receive that recording and you'll receive the slides as well. Um, um, I, I got a question here. What are some games that are good to play play attention with in order to obtain mental flexibility? You know, a lot of strategy games where you're problem solving and which is most games, honestly, even if you're doing a puzzle, that's having you solve a problem. So really any kind of board games, um, any kind of puzzles, obviously chess, things like that are very effective in helping you keep that. Um, I think that's a good thing to do. Um, even if you do like Sudoku puzzles or or crossword puzzles or things like that. All of those are giving you the opportunity to problem solve, to critically think, to think outside of the box. So I think when we're talking about what games could you use to help with this, I think any of those games would be very effective. Any kind of board game, a puzzle, um, things like that. Let's see what else do we have? Thank you for the question, Annie. Um, play it or the focus is is an assessment. So the assessment that focus will do is it's going to look at four areas of attentional control. It's going to look at your consistency, your performance, your impulsivity, and how you perform while you're being distracted. All of those areas of attentional control relate back to those different areas of executive function. So you'll do the assessment. The assessment is things like in the assessment, you'll do, um, it'll tell you when you see the yellow star, you hit the space bar. And so you'll do that when you see it. It's not a difficult assessment. The assessment's difficult because it's slow, mundane, repetitive. It essentially is putting you in your least ideal situation, that more mundane type of environment where it's harder for you to pay attention and have that strong executive function. And so it will test you in that, will receive the results, and you will, there will be results from it. And we'll talk about where um, we ask for your birthday because it's a norm range. So you'll be compared to your peers. And and so you'll see on that report a where the norm range is, so where individuals your age normally fall, and then you'll see where you fall at. And so it will um, show you areas that you are uh, maybe you need to strengthen. Um, it can show you areas that you're strong in, and it does um, play attention. Obviously, has training um, that uh, corresponds with that, um, but it will give you answers as well. So it's an assessment, but it tells you those areas that you might be a little bit weekend that you can strengthen. Um, the webinar, um, so the previous webinars, um, as we, um, it takes about a couple days after we do the webinar to upload it onto our website. So as I mentioned earlier, if you go to the executive function, um, uh, or do you go to the webinar tab on our website and you and you go to um, you go to the bottom and it says executive function webinar series and you go to that there the slides are not there but there are ebooks for every single um, webinar that we did that correspond very closely to the slides and so you can go back and look at those ebooks as well as watch those webinars um, so those will be available if you go to our website this one of course we'll we'll send this out today but in a couple days it will be posted on the website as well. And then there'll be an ebook that's associated with that. 
If a child says they want to do 100% of a task in order to get credit, what suggestions do you have for that? So that is an area of, of that very rigid thinking, right? Um, because they it's an all or nothing. And I think sometimes when we think all or nothing, that can be very difficult um, to fit into that, right? It's, it's either black or white. And that's definitely that rigid thinking. And so what I would ask, um, I, I guess I would ask number one, does the child do that in every activity or is it very specific activities. If it's in every activity, I, my, our suggestion would be to find something where he can do 50% and have it count for credit, right? And, and start letting him or her start to make those suggestions. If it's one specific activity, there might be something else behind there. You know, something may have happened, something, you know, there's that perfectionism. And so, you know, working on making some changes um, around other areas might start helping with that. If you're interested in receiving a certification for the webinar, um, you can send uh, just reply to the email that you received for this that has the link in it. Um, just reply to that. That's my those emails come directly to me. If you reply to that, I will email you back a certification. Uh, it's a, a letter of certification that you attended today. So if you're interested in that, just reply back to that email that you used to get into this webinar. Well, thank you so much. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to all of the questions, but if I did not address your question today, um, it, we will address your question. We'll reach out to you directly and answer those questions either uh, via email or something. That way we will make sure all of those questions get answered. Um, I do appreciate everyone being here today. Um, I know your time is very, very valuable. Um, you can always reach out to us at our 1-800 number that's here on the screen. There's lots of great information on our website as well. We have eBooks available, past our, our webinar series, is available there. Upcoming webinars are available. If you go there, we have some great testimonials. Um, we have examples of our um, the different cognitive exercise games available. We have success stories. So lots of great information. So if you haven't been to our website, I highly recommend you visiting. Um, so if you requested anything in here, we will make sure that you get that. If I didn't get to your question because there are so many in here, I cannot get back up to, uh, to the top to answer all of those. We will make sure we answer that question for you. You will be receiving the recording so watch for that here in the next couple hours and we appreciate so much your time um thank you so much have a wonderful day and happy new year